Hello everyone, I'm Allison Gonzalez. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works. And today we have another episode in my report design series. And we're talking about designing a report background in PowerPoint. So in our past episodes, we talked all about color theory and choosing a theme. That's great if you just wanna have a plain color background that you can put into the theme and use it. But if you want to kind of spruce up your reports, provide a little bit of extra oomph, a little bit more interest into that, then you are able to either have like a gradient or a texture or an image even as your background in Power BI. So we're going to go over some basic designs that you are able to make in PowerPoint. Well, if you're like, I don't have PowerPoint, I just have like the free version of Power BI and I don't have any of the other Microsoft programs. Well, next episode, I'm gonna show you how you can do this in a different free design tool. But let's go ahead and get into PowerPoint and see how we can make some awesome backgrounds. All right, so in our previous episodes, we saw how we could go to a bunch of different color palette sites to choose a color palette if we don't have one already. I'm up here on coolers and we can pick one here. Now, if we love it, we can keep this. Otherwise, if you hit the space bar on your keyboard, it will change it. And you can do this until you like one. You do it too many times, it may make you sign in. Again, you can get a free account for these basic ones. But once you find one you like, we'll go with these. Then these are the hex codes that we are going to use. So this right here, this is a hex code, and we are going to be using that to change the colors of the background that we are putting in in PowerPoint. So I'm gonna slide this off to the side so I have those hex codes handy. And once you've found your color palette, don't get rid of it. I'm gonna keep this for these colors and just move that off to the side. And then here in PowerPoint, I just opened up a completely blank report. Now, pro tip that I would give you, I would save one PowerPoint file that has all of your backgrounds in it. So you can just keep adding new slides, adding backgrounds in here, and then save it each time. Because I'm gonna show you when we export this, we will choose just to export one slide at a time. So I would 100% suggest have one PowerPoint that has all different slides with all of your backgrounds in there. That way, if you wanna reuse one, but just change some colors around, modify that a little bit, you don't have to start from scratch. You're gonna have that all saved and ready to use. So here I'm just gonna get rid of these elements so I have a blank canvas in front of me. And we're gonna do a few different designs. First one is just if I want to have a background color, a gradient, maybe multiple blocks on here, let's see how we can really easily do this. Now the great thing is that this PowerPoint slide size is pretty much identical to a Power BI background size. So you're gonna easily be able to put this in, set it to fit, and then it will have like a teeny tiny, slight marginal adjustment, and it will fit there pretty much exactly for you. So let's go ahead and I am going to just bring over a rectangle. So up here, just a regular rectangle shape. And I'm gonna cover my entire PowerPoint area here with that. So click on that rectangle and I'm gonna make sure that it is fitting my entire space here. Now a few changes I wanna make sure happen. First off, I wanna make sure I turn off the shape outline because I don't wanna have that border around here. So you wanna make sure that you set your border to no outline so we don't have that. So drop down, click no outline, that gets rid of this. Now for your shape, fill. You can, of course, pick any of these colors, but you could just do that in Power BI. So there's no point in doing it here in PowerPoint just to bring over a plain color. If you just want a plain color background, 100%, you can just set that already in Power BI, especially just put it in your theme and you're good to go. But if you want it to look a little bit extra special, you can go ahead and let's bring over a gradient. 
And then we'll also look at different textures we can bring in. But first off, let's do a gradient. Now gradients are great because they give you just a little bit of movement behind your visuals in your report. So it doesn't look as flat on your page. I won't go crazy overboard with doing a ton of really um, flashy gradients or having it go from bright yellow to purple on your slide. I definitely like these just more slight gradients in here. So what we're gonna do is pick one, and again, you can go with the light ones or the dark ones. Again, you can see these are subtle changes. They're not incredibly dramatic. We're gonna modify that though um, and check that out. So again, you can pick with any of these. And when you're thinking about it, just think of one side's your light side, one side is the dark side. There's also this more of a radial one where it's going from the center and kind of moving out with either dark in the center or light in the center, depending how you choose that. Let's just go with this one right here where it's going top right to bottom left. And I can see that this looks great. However, it doesn't fit the color palettes that we choose. Again, reminder, here's our colors. It's kind of close, but not the same thing. So we want to make sure we are adjusting it to fit those colors. So to do that, all you have to do is in that shape fill button drop down up here in that gradient where you just chose it, you can go to more gradients right here. And that is gonna let us modify the gradient that we have chosen. So shape fill drop down, gradient, more gradients, and that gives us this format shape pane right here on our right. Now I can see here in this formatting pane here, I can see the three colors that are used in the gradient, the darkest color, the middle color, and the lightest color. So I want to modify those to change them to the colors that are in my color palette. So first off, I'm gonna go with something similar. I'm going to grab the darkest color and just copied that from my color palette. And I'm gonna click on this little paint bucket drop down. And this is where I am going to go more colors and enter this in. So we're gonna type in our hex code, which is 0D0630. And you can always hit enter for it to register or okay. And there you can see my anarchist color is now in. So I'll click on the next gradient stop and then I will click that paintbrush again. So you always wanna pick the stop first and then go to your paint bucket. So we'll go to that paint bucket and then that more colors here at the bottom. So your paint bucket, more colors, and then I can again replace this with another color in here. Another alternative to this is because you have a eyedropper, the little color chooser, you are also able to just essentially take a screenshot of your color palette, put it up here, and then you can just use the um, eyedropper to choose that color. So that's a good alternative if you're able to take a screenshot of your colors, bring it in to make sure that if you don't wanna type out those text colors, you can essentially just grab that shade. All right, then our final last one, let's change this one, go more colors, and input the third color I want to use. And again, you don't always have to use four, three. Sometimes you might want to use just two, maybe one to white, one to black, something like that, or even set that. So now I have the three colors that I chose, maybe a gradient also modify this around. Maybe I want to make it a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. I can easily play with those gradient stops to change the look and feel of this and how that works. I could also, if I wanted to change it, change those preset gradients here or change it to a different option. So this is kind of your basic first option that I would say. Just if you want a little bit of something a little bit different, but you don't want it to be really flashy or really different from your background, um, really different from what you have going on or really distracting, you can always go with this. It lets your eye kind of move around the page a bit more. Then to save that, all you have to do is go to File, 
save as and then choose your location and the important part is when you are saving this you are going to save this as an SVG so when you are saving you are going to come down and save this as an SVG you are also able to save this as a JPEG or a PNG there's some other designed um, templates you can choose from that you're able to import in to Power BI as a background. However, this is the one that I prefer to use for backgrounds because it scales the best because an SVG is a scalable vector graphic. So if I'm using this on a gigantic screen, then I would very easily be able to see this. It would scale. It wouldn't get distorted. So that's the option I will go with. Some places in Power BI, you are not able to bring in SVGs, but backgrounds aren't one of them. So I definitely always save backgrounds as an SVG file. So we'll call this one blue gradient. And I'm going to, again, save this as that SVG. When you hit save, you're going to get this pop-up that lets you choose whether you want all sites or just this one. Go with just this one, especially if, like I suggested, you make that PowerPoint file that has all your backgrounds in it. You're just going to click on just this one. That gives you then this SVG file that you can take into PowerPoint and update in your background area. All right, if we want to modify this, make this a little bit different, we could also change by bringing in additional elements. So let's say I have this shape here and I wanna have a header. Well, I can just copy my existing one, can line that up, and then give myself a header, has the same look and feel, or even if I just want to change the color of that, I can easily add in additional shapes I can give myself some shape effects, like giving it a shadow. So if I wanna have some depth under there, create a little more visual interest. And this of course is where I would be putting like a title or any kind of header navigation I would wanna put in. One of our future episodes, we are going to talk about report structure and get more into what goes where and how we should set that up. Another feature I could put in if I wanna take my backgrounds to the next level would be to do a picture or a texture. Now, there's plenty of ones here in PowerPoint available, or you can even just look up free stock images on the internet and use those. But if you are looking at those pictures or textures, you can look and see, you can either import your own, you can just let it easily bring them in from your file, stock images, search online from one of these places or icons to bring those in. Or you can choose from any of these kind of texture options in here to fill that. And so you can also set your transparency in here. So if I want to make this a lot more transparent, if I don't want to show that, let's say if I put this to 75%, and then I have a different color underneath of this. So let's say we're going to duplicate this. And then while I have it, I'm going to make this one behind it a solid fill and I'm going to change that to blue. So now we can see we have this top layer. This is my picture. This is my texture and I can easily kind of just give that a very slight transparency. So it gives it a little bit of that extra texture without it being a ton or you can kind of bring that in if you want to see more of that texture. So you can easily take any of these patterns adjust your transparency, change your background color, and that will give you a lot more movement on what is happening behind there. Of course, this also allows you to perfectly resize photos. So if you bring over a actual picture and you're very specific with where you want it to be on your page, again, you can bring that in, adjust it to exactly where you want it to be, like I said, you can easily keep all of your backgrounds all here in the same PowerPoint file, store it somewhere nice and safe, and that way anytime you need a new background, you're going to have them really easily done, really easily accessible, and then editable in the future for, let's say I love this, but I want it to be more red instead of blue. I can easily go through and modify that later on. 
All right, so that is how you are able to make backgrounds in PowerPoint. So the rest of this series, we are gonna be making some more complex background styles in there, but I want you all to have a good basic get practicing, make that PowerPoint file with those backgrounds in and have that set up ready to go as we proceed and keep moving through this series this year. Also, if you're like, oh, I don't know about PowerPoint as design tool, Next episode, I'm gonna take you in to Canva and I'm gonna show you how it's a free design tool and how if you're like oh, a little nervous, a little scared to use it, don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through the process of using that to create backgrounds in Power BI. And we'll essentially create the same ones we made today, maybe a little bit different, a little variety there, but kind of the same general gradients, textures, and images that we would be able to put in and then in our next episode after that, we're gonna be talking about report structure. And we're gonna do some additional, a little bit more complicated designs in there so that way when you all to have this space, get used to going into PowerPoint, manipulating those shapes around so you can have those different gradients and textures and even images in there to use from. So I'll see you all in the next episode of this series. Happy learning.